What became the book War is Personal, or Project War is Personal, started in kind of stumbling increments. Way back in 9-11, when a massive fear overcame me of looking at that particular consequences of those 3,000 deaths as being the beginning of what's going to be a century of violence. The hardest thing is to try to contain a project, and containing war is personal was the hardest part. I said the only thing I could possibly do with the resources that I had at that time, being one person with enormous help from my wife, Janine, is to construct something that I can handle, which is getting on a plane. I can, and we did 15 families, 15 individuals in that particular book, and that's how it began. That's where the grant came in because the grant is a recognition of, of struggle and that grant gives you a sense of water when you're in panic and suddenly you, don't, you doubt yourself and then suddenly someone calls up and says, we don't doubt you. The moment that I actually was informed about the grant, I just remember being very upset, getting emotional, and suddenly hearing on the other line that people were crying, I said, this is like a hysteria. Not only am I in having difficulties, but they are too, which is, which is very celebratory. The meaning was that now I was suddenly set free to actually complete this, this thing. The most difficult assignment in the sense of a chapter of this book was the funeral of a Princess Samuels was her name, a young woman who was killed in Iraq at the age of 22. The family was divided about the war and that's the way we are, we're divided about the war. If you go to some, ask somebody about the war, you don't ask them about the war. You ask them about where they came from, who their parents are, and, you, and the war becomes part of the the texture of their life, and then people will tell you about the war. You've got these pictures of Carlos with the tears running down his face. How did you get them? We just got off the phone to this man, another dad, who proceeded to tell us about the day that his own military son came home from the war, and he said he came home, a huge man, apparently dad's a small man. Um, and one day he said, Dad, can I sit in your lap? And he was astounded, why would you sit in my lap? And he sat in his lap, and the next day he hung himself. We're on the phone to this man, and Carlos begins to weep. I can't even operate the camera. And all I could do, he was right there, so we took these photographs. You're given a gift. And it's a few minutes, and you have to do your job in a few minutes, and it's over. And the language that came from Carlos is pure poetry. It was poetry of loss. And the pictures were, were five minutes of photographs. Getty is one of the few places I, I can't think of any other place. You can go back and say, well, it's not over yet. And this is where the second grant came from. I knew I couldn't repeat myself, so we did a dramatic presentation a play out of the work that we produced for, for Getty for the text. And now I'm working into how to incorporate that text ultimately into a small book, updating where we are perhaps, and maybe going further. It's, it's still in flux. I may very well go on, I'm probably forced out in the road, because now there's another generation of coming back, and now they're coming back from Afghanistan. And that's not discussed at all, again, the cost of all these people coming back. I always feel if you start something, you finish it. That's, that's been the rules of the game, responsibility. <laughs>